Hello and welcome to some of my friends read comics. We've got Vance. Notify the rest of our worldwide organization. <laughs> We've got Chris. Oh, the IDF couldn't handle it. We're screwed. <laughs> uh, and I'm Kia. Hi, welcome to the show. Uh, we're reading some Age of Apocalypse. This is now. the dawning of the Age it's like of the, Apocalypse. The, the preamble. Yeah, yeah. The the prelude. We're reading Legion Quest. Um, and then we're also going. So okay, all right. We got to explain this correctly. <laughs> Legion Quest. It's like four issues across the X books. Then we're going to read X-Men Alpha, number one, which is like a one-shot that introduces Age of Apocalypse, right? So we're reading all that. And then, of course, we're doing The Life and Times of Scrooge McDuck, number 10. That's where your quote came from, right, Nance? I love yes, it did. Quote. We'll get oh, my that. stars and garters. That's where it, it came cute. from. It was cute. It was cute. Yeah, I thought about quoting it. Uh, I, <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were going to go for the Astrodome quote that's in uh, X-Men. Chris. Oh, I missed oh, the Astrodome one. quote completely. Um, what was your which, what was your quote again, Chris? Where did it come from? Oh, it was Iceman saying how oh. they were screwed because the uh, Israeli Defense Force lost. Yes, yes. Uh, boy, uh, something so... Te- we'll, we'll get to all this, but uh, yeah, though it's... Uh, <laughs> let's just keep rolling right into it. All right, so Age of Apocalypse. Have you all read any of this before? Vince, no, happened, I right? definitely when I, um, I briefly pirated comics a long time <laughs> ago, and the first thing I was like, I'm going to read Age of Apocalypse. And then I downloaded everything that said Age of Apocalypse, but I don't think it was in any, any logical order. So I, didn't. <laughs> I might have also had too many tie-ins that were just unnecessary. It also maybe may you got not have down. had Legion Quest because it's definitely not on the Marvel reading order. <gasps> yeah, yeah, Legion Quest know. feels important. Yeah, I don't know if that's even considered Age of Apocalypse, but yeah, it's the I have read incident. this before. <laughs> I, I I was uh, what ten years old or nine years old, and I picked these up off off the drugstore shelves, and I was like, "Oh, X Men, a lot of stuff going on, huh?" <laughs> this was definitely though. I was aware of it, and I know like the outcome of Legion Quest, although I didn't know that that's what comics it happened in, based off either the trading cards or talking about this because what is this like ninety four ninety five? I knew about it. I knew what caused it. I never read an X-Men comic during this time, but I knew about it. It was very much a big deal at the time. I knew it was big. I don't even think I was like aware of comics while this was happening. <laughs> what year was this? Was this like 90? This is 94. Yeah. Four? And, yeah. The Marvel Unlimited says everything is like the first of the month, like 90, like July, January 01, mm-hmm. 95, which I think probably they just didn't know the exact date. They don't yeah. know the exact date, yeah. But, um, but I mean, I, I really was not aware of these at all. I think I kind of knew what the inciting incident of Age of Apocalypse was, but I didn't even remember it now. I've yeah. never read any of this stuff. Um, and Chris, you've read these before, yeah? I have, yeah. You said, yes. And you, you read them at, at, time, oh, at the yeah. time. Were you able I, to yeah. like track down, like, oh, I got to find Legion Quest Part 2? And the I, I had issue? I had Legion to Quest Part Four and oh. I think two, uh, like in my original collection, which I no longer have uh, because I moved four times in three years. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's uh, I remember this. This was like the first big event comic I think I ever read, other than maybe the Clone Saga, which I think was going on r- right after this. I want to say Maximum uh, Carnage was right around this time. Yeah, like yeah, Maximum point. Carnage was right before this, which okay. I, I didn't read when it was happening. I had like issue three and eleven of that that I acquired <laughs> somehow. Got it. Um, so the specific issues that we are talking about here, just uh, for those who are following along that way, it's Uncanny X Men number three hundred twenty, then regular X Men number forty, then Uncanny number three twenty one then X-Men number 41, and those are the four. Um, I was reading from a trade that was and, labeled... And X-Men Alpha 2, right? And then X-Men, X-Men Alpha, Alpha number one. Yes. yes. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> T-O. <laughs> um, but the, the trade I was reading from is actually called X-Men Alpha, I think. Um, and it included a little prelude, like selected scenes from X-Men 39, which came right before this, like kind of the... The cliffhanger stuff. Um, did y'all see this at all? Or I, I, I did see uh, that, and I also I saw some entries that were confused as to why. I think there's like an X Factor issue that also ties into this, but because it happens yeah. concurrently, and it's technically they're like I don't know if editorial just wanted to keep the two X Men and Uncanny together for their yeah. numbering or it, something. Yeah, it gets a, it. Is it gets a reference? Uh, Marvel's like check this issue out, and it's like no, I'm not nah, gonna do that. I didn't check anything extra out. Yeah. Um, but, but, but all could things just cover being like, told, 90s X-Men comics, I was terrified of them on the news rack because none of the teams made sense to me based on my knowledge of the cartoon. 
Um, uh, yeah. And they, I mean, they and they gold blended. and gold and silver, Vince. What do you what do you need? Two though? team, <laughs> two team. Map? I well, I, I knew the Uncanny X Men was like the core X Men book that I was I'd, I'd heard of, and it was a team that was unrecognizable that's, to to nine year old me. That's the Here's gold the thing, team. Though. Gold as, team is uncanny, Vince. How do you not know this? <laughs> as, as you read these, though, you see these details, and you're like, you know what? There's no reason to be scared of these details. No, they absolutely. Don't I would. I've they been ter- I've been terrified of this for 25 goddamn years, <laughs> and I'm looking at this. And I'm like, this is fine. I I can tell. Yeah. I don't even. I still. We don't cover the X Men at all on this show, and I still was like, oh, I kind of know this team, and the people I don't yeah. know, I'll figure it out. Yeah. yeah. This was really easy X Men reading, like. This was not intended. Considering how many characters there are in this and how many different realities and timelines there are in this, you're right. It was surprisingly easy for yeah, what it it's is. It's like, yeah, yeah you've watched the cartoon. You know all these characters. Mm-hmm. Yep. I yep. was surprised. Um, I was expecting craziness. <laughs> All right, so let's let's start with the prequel here that they kind of read. Did you read this prequel thing, Chris? I literally you read know? the issues. I had to search them in the Marvel Limited app because I couldn't even <laughs> scroll like past 400 issues. I, <laughs> I haven't reread these prequel issues, but I I, right. gu- I can guess what happens. So yeah, it's basically so. Uh, Professor Xavier is dreaming. He's talking to Magneto, and uh, Mag Magneto's like, "Hey, do you ever wonder what the world would be like if I wasn't here and you could just like do your plan for peace without me fucking it up?" And uh, and Charles is like, "What? I've, no, I've never thought that." Uh, but it's like his own dream, so it's like maybe I am thinking it. But it's really his son, Legion, which is invading his dream. Uh, that's that's not okay. Um, so he wakes up. He's all terrified. Beast says, oh, Professor, is somebody attacking you? He's like, no, just my my son. But, um, you know, but I guess he's been deal- dealt with in the past. He's got multiple personalities and all this business, like, living inside him. That's why his name is Legion. He's a whole, like, yeah. legion of personalities. Yeah. And uh, uh, Charles Xavier is like, check out Legion on Hulu right now. <laughs> yeah. I was thinking and, about uh, going back to that Legion show on FX because it I is the same guy. Show. David Holler is the character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's like, you know, this is worse because, like, it didn't feel like he was, like, psychotic and split personalities and all that kind of stuff anymore. It, feel, it feels like he's a whole but he's probably even more dangerous because he's probably still crazy. So, uh, meanwhile, Legion is out in the desert. He's like hearing voices that tell him that he's the one who has to heal the human mutant rift, all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. So uh, we're we're we got that look to look forward to. Um, so let's jump right into the first part, Uncanny number three twenty. Uh, these are all uh, written by various people here: uh, Scott Lobdell. Um, with Mark dialogue Wade. Yeah, by as you Mark say, Wade. dialogue by Mark Wade. Yeah, I've never seen a. Uh, I guess I have seen some books kind of split it up like that. But yeah, plot by Scott, Scott Lobdell, dialogue by Mark Wade, Mark Wade in this issue, uh, art by Roger Cruz. And we just like jump straight into the action here. Roger Cruz doing his best impersonation of the regular artist of Uncanny X Men. It's it's fine. I mean, there's nothing in the art here generally that like jumps out to me. Um, maybe maybe a few things I'll remember as we go here, but it's serviceable. It's fine. Um, but Storm is the leader of the gold team. Uh, they're all in the desert, and they're already like in the middle of attacking Legion here, but they've got no effect on him. He's not even concerned. At first, I thought this was going to be like a danger room drill, uh, but no, it's it's the real deal. It's happening right now. And we get a uh, – oh, so who's out there? We got Bishop. Phoenix, Iceman, Psylocke, and Storm, right? Just those five. And, um, yeah. And Storm's trying to control the weather enough to, like, push him back and all that. And then we rewind to the them actually getting out to Israel. And um, the Israeli army and the, the PLO, the Palestine uh, Liberation Organization, I think, yeah. They're, like, working together because whatever they're dealing with is so terrible. I'm like, well, damn, that's a... <laughs> this has got to be big. Um, well, uh, I'm considering that's uh, yeah. Uh, all right. Um, then they meet with Gabrielle from X Factor, who tells them what's going on. No, so I guess at this time, no, not not from X Factor. Come on. Oh, sorry. I thought so. There was something going on. They mentioned X Factor around this time. Sorry. That was yeah, but it was a flashback to another issue. Is an X Factor like their international team at this point? Is that right? No, that was uh, oh. the the U.S. team. Well, then I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, anyways, X Factor has been dealing with some stuff, and and she's I she's Gabrielle... David's she's David's mom. She's David's yeah, mom. Yeah, Gabrielle yes, Haller yeah. is David's mom. That's why she's there. And it's Professor X is the dad, so obviously Professor X and her have something, or had right, something. Right. Okay. 
had something hmm who knows um but uh, you know they're they're meeting with her they're like all right we'll do what we can to help uh, back to the present now and legion it's like making storm relive some memories of her childhood it's not very nice uh, bishop helps her but he gets like blasted down Iceman gets a nice shot on him while he's down storm's like man this guy's been babbling like a madman since we got here and that's a good key to flashback to when they got there and they started to fight him, which feels like a weird flashback to, to go from like, yeah. hey, this is the middle of the fight to the beginning of the fight. Yeah, well, um, I mean, that's 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 the Stanley method. You start on page okay, one okay. where they're in a big fight and you're like, wait, did I miss something? You're probably like, wondering how I got here. Record scratch. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. This is me. Um, then, uh, so Legion, back to the present, I guess, Legion creates some sort of, like, a vortex, because he, I guess his whole plan for being here was to, to make a portal back in time to go to the past, and he does that. Uh, but four of the X-Men get trapped in there with him, or they get sucked up in there, and the only one who doesn't is Jean Grey. Uh, she does not get pulled through it. Um, she is able to communicate with uh, Professor X for like a second before she passes out as well. But yeah, Bishop, Storm, Psylocke, and Iceman are all in that portal with him. We don't even know it's a time portal at this point. Um, and then at the end of this issue, uh, Lalandra, uh, Magistrix Lalandra of the Shi'ar Empire. That's uh, uh, Professor X's ex-girlfriend from space. A lot of ex-girlfriends uh, Professor X. Yeah, X, yeah he's got a girlfriend. few. Professor X's exes. Uh, and she's like, uh, you know, she's lost her beloved Xavier due to uh, the responsibilities of the crown. She's sleeping when some dude bursts in and like beats up her guard. She's like, I don't have time to talk past your guard. I had to beat him up to let you know she's bad. Uh, end of everything. We got to We got to. Uh, so, you know, bad stuff's happening. Um, yeah. I mean, like you said, it was pretty, pretty um, easy to follow. Most of this issue is just like kind of generic fight stuff. Uh, it's not like there's a ton of heavy lifting to be done in terms of plot or story yet. Um, it does start to get a little bit like, I, I think at this, uh, I didn't realize what was going on in this next issue until a little bit later. Uh, I mean, but X, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to say, imagine you're 10 years old and you don't know who Legion is. <laughs> so you're a little I mean, confused. It, like what the hell is going on? <laughs> but they did enough of a good job of just explaining all the important stuff of like, you know, this is Legion, my son with uh, personalities split up. Right. But he's this is definitely the first Legion. Yeah. I mean, I was like, he's, he has a, a different power for every personality. I think they right. said in here, which sounds like a, a Doom Patrol character now that I'm saying it. But, That's a uh, crazy yeah. Jane. Yeah. 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 yeah a, little, a little bit, a little bit. Uh, a little yeah. Bit. And, and taking back uh, various X-Men characters, uh, you know. Who, who we are introduced to, um, you know, again, Roger Cruz does the art for this Uncanny X-Men issue. Uh, a lot of, uh, how, do you, how do you say, uncomfortable uh, female <laughs> there, there, are, there, there are some, there are some, some mm-hmm. interesting angles and, and drawings of, uh, of boobs in this that don't seem accurate. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. And, 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 and butts too for Psylocke. Mm-hmm. There, yep. there's, there's, I don't know if he's the one that does the man. Iceman has some weird pecs in, a, in another issue, also. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know if it's this one or the other one, but yeah, this one has so much where he's just like, oh, okay. Yeah, hmm. I mean, but like, it's fine. I'm, I'm along for the ride. Like, I don't know Jean Grey's status. I don't think it's gonna be told to me in this. I, I thought she was dead. I guess not. Maybe not. Why, why would you think she's dead? Vince? She's right there. She's right there. <laughs> What's your problem? That was that was a that was years ago. That was a decade, decade ago. ago. <laughs> um, Phoenix, I just Phoenix thinking, is over. She's yeah. alive. I just kept thinking about Legion. Mary Cyclops right around this. Now uh, <laughs> and how like Legion looks like the uh, the Slim Jim guy and or the Static X guy. Those two guys. He looks like guy. he looks like something out of a Steve Dillon comic. Also, yeah, I do, yeah. I do like this crazy mohawk. It is mm-hmm. cool. It's a bit much. Um, all right, me. it's it's a lot of hair. <laughs> it is, but a also lot. he passes stuff. the silhouette test. I know sure as shit who Legion is every time I see him. Yeah, I'm not gonna. Yeah. You're never gonna get him mixed up. Yeah, uh, you're you're <laughs> never gonna be like, is that Jubilee or or? Uh, yep, never gonna be Legion. You, no, you know. Mm-hmm. Um. All right, so so let's jump to the next issue here. This issue starts in the past with <laughs> uh, Professor X and Magneto talking to each other. 
And I did not know it was in the past. I thought they were on some sort of like a secret mission pretending to be working at this place so that they could investigate everything that's going on in Israel. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. But how did they get like these positions here? And they kept talking to each other in a sort of code. And I'm like, okay. But no, then I realized, oh, no, I'm an idiot. This is them like at a young age starting to build their relationship. Well, it's tricksy with you because he's sitting, he's bald and sitting in his chair. And yeah. then he, and how then am I supposed to know? And, and like for like two pages, and you're like, okay, well that makes sense. And then he stands up, and you're like, wait, what the fuck? Okay, <laughs> yeah. and I like, guess and, this is the and and he's so he's in, yeah. Oh, he stands up. I missed that. Okay, yeah, he stands yeah, up, he and goes. he's like, man, we got a real good deal on these chairs. I'm like, yeah, because you're in a wheelchair. And he goes, no, cause, <laughs> yeah, because I'm part of some like humanitarian mission to get wheelchairs. I don't know. Because yeah, because it's early and, '60s Israel or whatever it is. And I thought Magneto was just like making a good joke because he's like, hey, you, you know, uh, you, you did a great job making me this wheelchair. And he says, I've always had a way with metal, man. And I'm like, oh, yeah, Professor Professor X gets that joke. But he didn't get that joke. I, didn't know that. <laughs> I like how you're like, also like, they're clearly talking in code. No, it's a flashback. They're not. It's real. Uh, all right. So it is are... uh, it is X Men First Class happening before your eyes. <laughs> okay. So so they're in this hospital in uh, what city did they name uh, Haifa? I think they said. Yeah. I, yeah. It's, it's, it's yeah. Close it's to Antifa. old. Yeah. Um, and they are yeah, so they're, they're in the X, Middle East. Uh, yeah. Professor X is like a doctor at this psychiatric. Uh, it's not really a hospital. It's just like a mental clinic of some sort. Um, and Magneto or Eric Magnus is just a orderly there who he doesn't even know why he's there really. Um, but there were, there's also a John Doe that they're dealing with who, uh, seems to be a little bit crazy. doesn't even know what he's doing there, but I think that's, uh, that's Legion, right? Yeah. We learn later. That's and he's Legion. also, I don't know if they talk about it here, but he's like, Professor X is maybe dating a patient who's Gabrielle Heller. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't know she was a patient, but they did. Like, or maybe his, like, he's definitely a subordinate. Stuff. Like he definitely has like an authority position over her. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah that's that's uh, Professor X. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's getting... Professor X is one of his trademark characters exploding as a one of his problematic fave, oh, Professor X. He loves uh, Gabriel Heller, uh, Amanda Haller, or whatever her name is, and Jean Grey. Uh oh. Yeah. Not a, not okay. Not okay, Professor X. Um, it was a different so, time. Uh, it was 20 years ago. That's what they said. Yep. <laughs> Whatever that was. So mean, it's 20 years ago. <laughs> it's always 20 years ago. <laughs> uh, so so meanwhile, Professor, uh, back in the present, we have Angel and Rogue. They're out looking for the missing X-Men. Uh, they find Jean, who was passed out. They couldn't like track her psychically because she like had a psychic shell or something. And uh, you know, Warren wants to go back out there, but Scott, this, uh, Cyclops, he says, nope, we're going to wait for Jean to wake up, see, what, see what's going on here. Um, who, who, Gambit's like, oh yeah, whatever you say, leader. And Beast says, actually, I'm the I'm the leader of this team. I'm gonna make you push ups if you don't respect me. Thanks very much. <laughs> uh, it never comes up again. It does not matter that Beast is the leader. Poor, of this team. poor Beast. <laughs> he does He's say stars and garters replaced twice by his evil twin. twin. Yeah. <laughs> oh, is Beast <laughs> replaced by an evil twin right now? No, he's about to be after Edge of Apocalypse. Oh. We'll, we'll, oh. we, don't worry, Vince. As worry. as we read on, you'll meet you'll his learn. twin. You'll learn. Um, so we have Jean who wakes up pretty quickly. She describes Legion, says um, she, you know, they've taken them into Charles's past, um, and now we we see the other team that's in the past. They've been there for two weeks, and they have no idea what's going on. They simultaneously like don't have any memories but they know their names they had these duffel bags full of x gear and they're like what the hell is this but they're Um, all best friends somehow just by having they're all friends um and like bobby uh iceman says this line it's like you know this is weird we got a a black woman with white hair and we got a an asian lady with a british accent what the hell's going on they say that twice they 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 say it twice I just, for the first time, I'm like, okay, it's not that bad. I get that, like, he's just trying to identify who they are, and it's like, hey, you know, these are characteristics I'm pointing to. But then later, the narration does it, and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, all right. That, but it was yeah, like, it was weird. like this misfit motley crew of weird people, like a woman with storm powers and a guy <laughs> who can turn into ice. And an Asian woman with a British accent. What, like, like, what? Whoa, whoa, one of these things is not like the other. That's, yeah. How strange. Well. Oh, <laughs> which, which one's not with the other, Vince? <laughs> all right, all right. 
So I mean, it, it 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 definitely jumped out to me as like the weirdest, the weirdest. I, I let it go once. It was the second time I went. Right, oh, goddamn. The, the second one got me. The second one got me. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Um. Anyways, Magnus is. Uh. That's right. He goes. He's a patient. Um. I'm I'm behind on my notes here. Let's let's catch back up. Where am I? Oh yeah, I wrote down the line. Betsy's right, Bish. I like you can call Bishop Bish. Bish. <laughs> That's pretty he, good. Does, he doesn't know what's going on. Bish, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> um, so we get another quick interlude to advertise whatever Wolverine's got going on. Uh, he's fighting <laughs> Saber Tooth over in his book. comic. I don't yeah, know it's like, it hey, if you want to see them fight, go read the Wolverine comic. I mean, it was cool, like a, cool. it, was, it was definitely like a Gapucci moment where every, everybody should be yeah. wondering when they're reading an X Men comic, where's Wolverine? <laughs> where's yeah. Wolverine? Yeah, what's he doing? <laughs> he, he wants to fight Saber Tooth. <laughs> yeah. Um, so back to the past, uh, uh, this kid that he's taken care of, it's, it's Legion in the hospital, starts going real crazy. Uh, it's like you know, creating fiery images of the, the present day stuff that's happening. And he runs to find Professor X, who's on a date with Gabby. And uh, yeah, he's like, hey, we got we got to go back here. It's one of the you remember you were telling me how you think some people might have a special <sighs> gift. Well, I think I found one of the people who might have a special gift. You got to come with me. Oh. And um, they go running, and yeah, it's pretty rough, uh, but it's all right, I guess. Back in the, back in the present, Cable and Domino show up, uh, because, mm-hmm. of course, when you're dealing with time stuff, who are you going to call a guy called Gabe Cable? I was going to say, uh, Domino? That's who you're going to call? She was, um, she's, she's somehow, te- she's with Cable a lot. She's also in the Deadpool 2 movie with Cable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Are they like on um, X-Force or something together? Is that the deal? Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. She's kind of the second in command of X Force. Okay. I think. Are they a couple in this as well? I think they are. Uh, um, uh, kind of something. I flipped through the Cable comic that was in this trade. I didn't read it because it was yeah, written but, by Jeff Loeb. Uh, I don't um, know if they. I don't know if they call them a couple, but they're they're good they're, friends. All right, there's something happening. All right. I do want to say that and this then, book uh, manages to like layer in the 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 on the surface like stupid stuff that like or like intimidating stuff to a, to an outside reader. Really well, it's like, ah, it's your son from the future, Cable. And they just keep moving on. Like, they, don't, <laughs> yeah. they expect yep. you to keep up yeah. or just, like, they don't dwell on it enough for me to be like, that's weird. They're just like, yeah, that's what yeah. it is. They they all know yeah, the relationship. Keep you moving. should catch up. And I do. Yep. So it's somehow the confidence works for me. Yeah. Yep. And then, I mean, uh, and then I mean, Lander, again, watch, oh. watch the X-Men cartoon. Check it out. Yeah. He's, he's, so, in, he's in the cartoon multiple episodes. Yeah. Is Bishop also there? I don't know what Bishop's powers are. He yeah, just got Bishop's an M on his there. face. And I'm like, okay. Bishop Bishop, uh, Bishop is in he's in a two parter where he screws something up and then Cable shows up and then he's in the five part uh, apocalypse. He, okay. he he can absorb energy I think and then like shoot it back out. Yeah. Uh, anyway, okay, like kind of like Black Panther uh, suit. Got it. Yeah. Uh, the the mm. Lalandra shows up. Uh, like, to mm, warn, not exactly. <laughs> not to warn Xavier that uh, the past stuff is going to ruin the fabric of reality. Um, and <laughs> Professor Xavier is like, how's that even possible? <laughs> and but she knows this because she has seven watchers with her. Whoa, that's a lot of watchers. Yeah. They never she, come up again in this comic. Yeah. I, wrote, <laughs> I was so excited to write this down. And they never yeah. came back. Yeah, she's like, Professor X, we've had sex multiple times. So uh, uh, this is going to screw things up. And he's like, what? Yeah, I was happy to see Lalandra uh, though. I'm like usually I, like the second I see Shiar, I'm like I'm out. But you know I was happy to see them here. So I'm, you're, I'm slowly being worn anything. down. Either that or Mark Way's dialogue makes it less intimidating, or Scott Lobdell's yeah, plotting yeah. is really good. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, one of the two. <laughs> um, one of these guys is good. Who who can say who? Uh, so back to Uncanny X Men. We're into part three now, issue three twenty one. Uh, we're back in the past, and Chuck and Magneto. What happened with the Legion thing in the last issue? Did I miss something? I don't know. Um, but Chuck and Magneto. Yeah, I think were they're talking. still like just he's crazy. They're, oh, and okay. he also told like Magneto that he's gonna be evil. I think. Mm-hmm. No, or is that this issue? Oh yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He told Magneto that. that in the future Magneto will be evil. So he, he's telling his, I don't know, Godfather, whatever Magneto is to whatever. It's like an uncle, not a real uncle, but like a friend you call an uncle. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, so Chuck and Magneto are at a bar. They're talking about how Homo Superior can live alongside Homo Sapiens. And Magneto's like, I don't, I don't know about that. <laughs> and um, there's some amputee with no legs. He's playing the flute and everyone's applauding for him. Um, 
And then this other jerk comes up and calls him a gimp and like pours beer on him. Like, man, what an asshole. And Professor X just has to butt in. So they get a little bar fight going. It's all right. That guy's got quite the happy trail. I don't know. That's overdrawn. This blonde happy trail coming out of his pants. Oh, yeah. It's very. Ron Garney, you're usually a good artist. What are you doing here? It looks like he's just got a feather sticking out of his. uh, his, uh, (laughs) That's no feather. It's Ron Garney. Um, I know. This issue, by the way, is called Old Lang Sign. Happy New Year's, guys. This is the last year hey, episode of the year. Hey, Happy New Year. Happy yeah. Um, should, so, old, um, should, should old acquaintance be killed in the past? This um, also says, X fans, with this issue, you, you must read Cable number 20. I do. Which, which we which, didn't do. Which uh, <laughs> it's not Legion Quest 2. It's This is Legion Quest 3. I do not need to read Cable yep. 20. <laughs> not at all. Um, so um, we have. The modern X-Men, they're all, like, trying to figure out how they're going to get into the past, and it's tough because Cable's <sighs> stuff is broken. I don't know. Um, the past X-Men are now dock workers. Um, well, Bishop and Iceman are working on the docks, while figuring out what's going on while Psylocke and Storm are doing some psychic stuff to figure it out. Um, Legion uh, approaches his mom now. Oh, yeah, yeah, this starts to get weird. Legion... Mm-hmm is like making out with his his mom but he's dressed as charles he's looking like charles he's doing something like charles yeah he definitely it's seduces weird. his mom yeah i'm not into it not into um it. It's weird charles senses it and he's with magneto <laughs> we gotta run safer Char- charles uh, would sense that yeah he sensed sense it all he's a sensitive guy <laughs> yeah uh cable finally makes it to the past he like stuns bishop to get him to try to remember like st- stuns some uh psychic memory stuff back into him i guess so Um, so again for for people who are new to the x-men in the 90s bishop thinks gambit is the betrayer of the x-men so he really thinks that's the guy Mm. he's wrong but that's who we think is is the person who's betraying the x-men at this point he's recent was gambit a, a villain at one point or is bishop a time traveler Bishop Gambit is was a time a traveler. Thief. Gambit is a mystery man, uh, so we don't know Bishop's history. Uh, so we don't know like what Bishop's deal is. But Bishop is like immediately like Gambit. You're the guy. You're you're the bad guy who betrays the X Men. That doesn't feel like it came up at all in this, did it? Really? I don't know. Um, I mean, a little. Is bit. it going to come up later? Okay. Okay. Well, well, let me know when it comes up more because I kind of missed all of that when <laughs> when it's important. Um, I, I I just want you to understand, Bishop is a man out of time. He doesn't know what's going on. Okay, okay. Cable's also a man out of time, though. Yeah, but he does know what's going on. I see. Okay, that's <laughs> it. I got it. Got it. Um, so Charles finds Gabby. Legion is still there, and he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna kill Magneto because you are gonna turn evil and you're gonna make everything terrible for my dad." And I just want my dad's dream to come true. Right. So he knows. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> um, and also, like, uh, I guess we're kind of bleeding into the next issue here. But Legion and Magneto talk a lot more about that kind of stuff. And I, I think Legion is like, I, I, my daddy's dream has to come true. And Magneto's like, what's your daddy's dream? And he's like, <laughs> oh, I, I see who your dad is now. I got it. <laughs> um, but uh, the team from the past is like just watching them fight. And it's the first mutant super fight, I guess that they're seeing in the world. Um, the captions tell us that this is why they were sent to the past to stop this fight from happening, to stop Magneto from being killed. But I'm like, wait, they weren't sent to the past. They just happened to get sucked into the portal. <laughs> but um, but well, um, they didn't know. That's yeah, they're like, no. F- Fabian cable... Nietzsche did not get that note for the content. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it's like, no, Cable reminded us why we're here. And now we know and we can do our thing. There's not even like, um, a, I get it. That must be why we're here. <laughs> yeah we're just told yeah yeah again um, yeah yeah this is cyclops's uh son who's like this is the reason we're here and they're like who what yeah, yeah. um so gabby meanwhile is freaking out like her and uh professor xavier are like trying to get to a safe place and psylocke manages to get in touch with xavier telepathically and xavier is like oh all right i gotta go do this whole x-men thing it's pretty exciting and he puts gabby to sleep and he goes to, to join There's up with gotta them. There's got to be better ways to have people like not be involved in your situation and keep them safe than literally knocking them out and putting them in a sleep spell. Right? Wow. Yeah. Probably. Well, As move one, you're like, here's what we got to do. You can't be here. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I get it in terms of like, 
God, I can't explain this shit right now. I'm like, <laughs> just let me, just let me, I just got to go. It, it, it's uh, just more awkward to be like, no, really. And I, I guess I'm from the South and we have that like 20 minute protracted <laughs> goodbye shit. Um, <laughs> it's just easier to say. Because he literally yeah. says like, you know what? I'm sorry, I just, but it's better for you if you just sleep here through all this. Like that's... <laughs> Whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, Prince Eric doesn't come off looking great. No. Uh, but then I do like the to swerve everyone. though that you said because like we think that like what's going to happen is that Magneto's going to be killed. So. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, so Xavier is uh, like with the rest of the X Men now. He recognizes Storm's brain patterns as the little girl who tried to rob him in Cairo a few weeks ago, and I'm like, all right, that's a pretty uh-huh. nice little touch that he would recognize that. Yeah. Um, we had a nice scene back in the present with Rogue and Gambit where Gambit is like, okay, that, that vision of Empress Lalandra came down and it's just a hologram. (laughs) So sad for Professor Xavier. Can't touch her. Hmm. And Rogue's like, oh, get close to me. (laughs) Um, in the past, we also get a little vignette of Apocalypse. We don't really know it's Apocalypse yet, but he is seeing the rise of mutants for the first time. And it's like 10 years earlier. Shadows. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, it's 10 years earlier than he expected, but he starts getting ready. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in the 60s, he's like, time to uh, be introduced in the 60s and not the 80s. <laughs> so so Apocalypse uh, does show up like in the in the 80s, I guess? Is that where? Yes, yeah. Okay. He's he's an X-Factor villain. Okay. So. That's right. He's uh, nobody important. Well, I guess uh, wasn't. How, how dare you? How, how dare me? Dare you? <laughs> So uh, uh, we have um, so so Legion keeps calling him Magneto when they're fighting, and he's like, "Why are you calling me that? That's not my name." Um, <laughs> it is a dope name, man. I wish it I, is I do name. feel like this is a, a something the movies could have done, and I'm glad they didn't, but they could have. Yep. Yep. I mean, they they just did like a time travel movie like right before their apocalypse movie, but yeah. they didn't they didn't go full Age of Apocalypse either. Right. Mm, yeah. For but X-Men and. Apocalypse. and, and and having, you know, their sort of most uh, sympathetic character, other than, other than maybe Mystique, um, you know, being a, a big name. And it's like, oh, we could have just done Age of Park Ops. Uh, whoops. Yeah. Whoops. Um, we have um, the X-Men show up now to this fight. And they're, like, trying to help out. Iceman freezes all of the water in Legion's body. And the fight is over. Hooray. You did it, Iceman. Nice job. Woo! Woo! Everyone's celebrating. It doesn't work. Uh, Legion blasts them all down, psychic style. He um, grabs Magnus and is like, I'm going to kill you. Uh, I, I like this. Um, Magneto's like, oh, you know, I, you're going to condemn me for something I haven't even done yet. Um, and Professor X is like, oh, my God, I can't believe you're doing this in my name. Um, right before Legion does his final attack on Magneto, Professor X jumps in front of it. And he takes the attack. And Professor X dies instead. Oh, shit. Uh, that means Legion never existed because his dad is dead. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I paradox, though. The, the, yeah. He can't yeah. exist. Legion is, like, Legion is like, oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, immediately realizes that he screwed up. Yeah. Then he gets, like, sucked away into nothingness. The X-Men also don't exist anymore. They get sucked up into way into, into nothingness. Except Bishop is still there because he's a different kind of time-fucked, and now he's yeah. even more time-fucked. Yeah, because, he's, uh, yeah. It, he's from, like, 60 years in the, in the future, so he's like, uh-oh, I'm yeah, still okay. here. <laughs> this is not good. Um, and we, in the future, so now we, like, just jump to another scene. It's Aval- Avalon, an orbital sanctuary for mutants. And this seems to be like some sort of like, what is this? We're like catching up with modern time. Um, So back to the present, we see like there's a Rogue and Gambit have a nice kiss before like they see this time wave like approaching them and changing everything with this cool glass effect. Um, And that's that's the end of this. Then the next issue jumps into this different universe. Again, 10 year old Chris is like, yes, yes. Yeah. I'm bored. I'm about to buy a five (laughs) dollar. foil issue uh, on what's coming up next this is this is awesome (laughs) so you didn't Um, see this coming i'm assuming at all i mean how could you Uh, yeah yeah, you really there's no way to it's pretty great um it's like i I knew this going in that that's what caused age of apocalypse but i'd completely forgotten it so when it came around again like oh shit 
That's uh Well, and they, they swerve nice. it. They swerve it because, like, I'm like, well, this is, you know, I know that Age of Apocalypse is Professor X died in the past, and so Magneto founded the X-Men. I know that. Mm-hmm. I've known that, you know, for 25 years from talking on the playground. But then they spend this whole issue <laughs> be like, well, Magneto's going to die. I'm like, wait a second. Did, did we pick the right issues here? Like, what did I? What am I doing here? So it even <laughs> swerves. Like, you know, like something important's about to happen, but not that. Um, that's the. That's yeah. a really good swerve. Yep. Um, this this is where the trade included cable number twenty. The art looked okay. <laughs> um, but we I, flipped I, right I, past I, it. <clears throat> X Men Alpha. Well, and, number and one. the X books are like done for the next four months. Like the next issue yeah. of because uh, it's X Men Forty One. X Men Forty Two doesn't come out until like July. This was February. Yeah. Okay. So so listener, we do plan to read all these other little X Men uh, Age of Apocalypse miniseries that are coming up. We'll kind of read each one uh, in its own time whenever we decide to come back to this until we eventually get through with all of them and we'll we'll read the finale of Age of Apocalypse. We're going to take our I time. Do, with I don't this, think it's that much, though. It's less than like 30. Issues it's really not. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but we are going to read right now for this. We read X Men Alpha number one as well to get the lay of the land for Age of Apocalypse it's- and what all this is. Which again, I had the foil cover of. Uh, yeah, so five dollar comic in 1995. Yeah, yeah, that's crazy. sold, the inflation sold to uh, uh, move in multiple times in three years, uh, but a, a great issue. Yep, so um, I didn't did even Chris, realize on the how cover. How much did little ten year old Chris pay for this? Nine dollars and twelve cents adjusted for inflation. <laughs> At at literally a CVS, like that was back when mm-hmm. we had uh, you just walk back. in and they had the comics and you would buy them. It yep. is a double yep. sized issue though, and a big deal. yeah, yeah. It's, it it's a foil cover, double size. This this Look, was man. there for a while. You got Wolverine with one hand on the cover. Yes. What's going on here? I didn't even realize in the comic I wasn't paying attention that he had one hand. That's not Weapon X. Um. But uh, a nice wraparound cover as well. You got to have that. Um, but um, I think let's just jump right into it. We open with um, there's a, a wanderer going through this wasteland, uh, and it's Bishop. We find out later yeah. that it's Bishop. It's not. Yeah, we, it's not we hidden. Know it's Bishop. Yeah. Um, and you know we're we're kind of getting our introduction to this world where he's talking about how he's following the Infinite's trail of genocide. I don't know who the Infinites are. Um, but humans have pretty much vacated North America. The few that are left are being like hunted. Although we, I guess we run into a few more later. Um, I, I like to see in this world. I don't even know how any humans are surviving here. Um, a little human girl is like running toward him. She's being chased by Eunice uh, yeah, and an army of like green people. Eunice, the, ah, that's right. I was like, where do I recognize this guy? From? Eunice, the Untouchable. Yeah, uh, he's got like his uh, his little crew and some green armor and everything. Um, and this boss, uh, Eunice is like, well, why is there still a human alive here? What's going on? They think the human character, the hooded character is a human, but he absorbs their power. That's how you know it's Bishop. Um, and then the X-Men show up. It's Magneto and his X-Men. Who are they? Um, the coolest X-Men ever. They're pretty good. We got Sabretooth and like a, a real wild kind of dude on a leash. Who is that? Is that like the... That's Wild Child on a leash. Wild Child, uh, okay. Also, uh, Weapon Omega or whatever from uh, Alpha Flight. What? Oh, okay, okay. Um, we also have Rogue and Nightcrawler. They jump in and attack. Blink Blink is like, slow down, everybody. Yeah. Blink, Blink is a is new, a new is character. Yeah. yeah, but she sticks around for the Exiles. Uh, same with Morph as well. Uh, Morph is there who helps shape the land to recoil Rogue's attack. They're like yeah. Morph from the cartoon. The oh, Morph from the cartoon. That's right. Morph. Um, we have Storm and Quicksilver. They're doing their thing. Uh, but Eunice goes straight for Magneto uh, while all the action is going on. He's got a plastic gun with plastic bullets. Smart. Uh, but Iceman it- stops him. Good job. I don't know. Um, Magneto is talking about how he's taken up the dream of Charles Xavier since his death 20 years ago. And he goes to talk to the stranger that he just saved who reveals himself as Bishop. And he was, he was blaming Magneto for his death. Um, and Magneto doesn't want to hear it. He puts him to sleep. But he does it by slowing the flow of iron to his brain. Hmm. A creative way to put somebody to sleep. Hmm. 
Uh, meanwhile, over in a different, you know, the only thing that I think I kind of would have liked here is just some captions, like, I don't know, maybe some locations or just letting me know sometimes that we're jumping to different scenes. I don't know what it was. It felt like it needed something like that for me. Anyway, uh, but Beast is running some experiments on Mr. Dukes. Who is this, the blob? Red Dukes, uh, the blob. Nothing Rick. stops him. And he busts out, starts going crazy. Havoc shows up to help. Uh, I'm not, and then... Finally, it's like going yeah. super fast because of all these experiments and stuff. But Cyclops shows up. Cyclops looks pretty badass. He's got long hair. He's got he's five o'clock evil. Shadow. He's evil. He works for uh, basically works for Apocalypse, right? Yeah, um, he works for Sinister, which is right. like a second hand working for Apocalypse. Yeah. And like so Cyclops is, gets mad at Beast because he says, hey, you were supposed to shut this lab down. Uh, Apocalypse has put like created the Kelly Pact which says we're going to stop all like everyone should stop all genetic experimentation. And this is going to be good for humans and mutants to work together. And uh, we don't want to ruin the trust now. So, you know, get rid of this. Um, and the brothers are kind of like arguing and fighting until Mr. Sinister shows up. Mr. Sinister raised them. That happened in like the regular universe too, right? I mean, we find sort out of. later. Yes. He yeah. is the guy who runs the orphanage that the Summers brothers work. Uh, that's go right, to. That's right. Um, but now he's saying goodbye to them because he has to go take care of something and he might not come back. And he's like, <laughs> so, and Scott's like, Oh my God, no. Uh, but so, yeah, he's like, Scott's a sheltered little pussy. Yeah. Uh, I, I love it. It's so, uh, you know, if the, you were a fan of Cyclops at the time, you're like, what the hell? He sucks. <laughs> but it's just like, as a fan of X-Men in the nineties, I'm like, he sucks. Good. <laughs> There's a, the caption even is like dissonant. I'm like, he thought he knew all the answers. Turns out he did, didn't even know the question. <laughs> and what a loser. Um, Wait, he yeah, still tries he... to make him cool. He's got like a one eye, uh, long hair, tries to be it's cool. A, it's a good look. It's a good look. Um, but Mr. Sinister, what is his reason for leaving? He says that a madness has seized one of our own and it might like ruin the chance of humans and mutants getting together, something like that. Yeah. Um, and he, anyway, he, he's got to go deal with uh, X Man, M A N, uh, X Man, the, the yeah, cable yeah. series. Um, so oh, it's not on Warren, network television. It's a cable series. <sighs> That's right. That's right. right. Not even we one of the to, one of the prime series. <laughs> we jump to Angel's mansion. Warren Worthington. Uh, he's got a mansion. Oh, uh, that's right. Uh, and in the last scene, Scott sees all these Sentinels coming. Who, um, you know, Sentinels still hunting mutants, I guess. Uh, but Warren Worthington's got a mansion. All his guests see the Sentinels just go right by, and they don't know how he does it. They're guessing, like, is it some kind of a protective field? I don't know. And Warren Worth Worthington doesn't say. He just says his friends are protected in here. Hmm. Um, Scarlet sings a song. Who is Scarlet supposed to be? Is that Songbird? No. Songbird's Jean not Oh, it is? Wait, no. I thought Jean Grey was uh, over with Wolverine later. Uh, I mean, she is. Scarlet, I thought I had like long hair. Okay, Scarlet is somebody red with red hair singing, and I also did think it was Jean Grey at first. I thought maybe Scarlet Jean Witch. Later. No, no, not Scarlet Witch. It's if it's anything, it's Madeline Pryor, Jean Grey's clone. Oh, that could be it. Okay, well, maybe <laughs> maybe we'll find out more about her later. Um, this, somebody, this is uh, a alternate universe where Jean Grey has a clone. <laughs> okay, great. Um, the uh, Warren Worthington's got like an assistant who says the Cajun is waiting for talk to talk to you. All right. Um, and it's Gambit who's asking where Magneto is, like just trying to get to Magneto. Uh, what does he say? He's like, hey, Angel's real close to Angle. And I figured if anyone's got an angle to get a Magneto, it's you. That's uncanny yeah, yeah. logic. That, 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 Perfect. That, yeah. Perfect. Um, this, uh, again, as, as a 10 year old, I was like, wow. Gambit is the coolest man in the world. <laughs> um, so Magneto and his team are hiding in Westchester. Um, <laughs> Rogue has a son who is being taken care of by like a robot nanny. And who's the dad? Magneto was the dad. Oh, my God. Magneto and Rogue have a kid and they named him Charles. That's sweet. Um, she is sad because she can't touch her own son. And I don't understand how the childbirth. Process. I was thinking the Happened. exact same thing. Yeah. I mean, she has powers. They've got basically 
she, you know, Magneto can make it so it's okay when he's around. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I mean, I I was going into like, well, is it her skin, like the actual ex- outer external skin that that causes it, and like maybe could yeah. the baby yeah. be delivered via C section without? Touching? And also, the baby maybe like when it was technically a part of her, like maybe yeah. that was still because it was connected know. via the umbilical cord and the placenta. That's possible yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. This all checks I'm out. All yeah. 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 Anyways, okay. well, maybe maybe they'll get well, into that later. And again, we'll maybe one know, of the mini mini series is about just that. You know, classic X Men, uh, uh, like three or four years earlier, uh, was that uh, Magneto in the Savage Land had a cure for Rogue's uh, touch. Oh, yeah. uh, so, it, you know, it all works out. It all works out. They they had this attraction, and now in this alternate universe, they have kids. Beautiful. Um, Bishop is still there and he's like, Hey, why don't you tell everybody what really happened to Xavier? And Magneto's like, Hey, shut up. <laughs> um, it's a weird conversation with Mr. Sinister and, um, what's this guy's name? It's Apocalypse's son. Uh, Holocaust. He, Holocaust. What a name. Yeah. Um, and there's, he, I think there's somebody bad. else. Very bad. Um, Just in case you forget there. that he's a bad guy <laughs> who looks like a skeleton monster. <laughs> He's like in oh, like encased in fire or something. Yeah, yeah but every now and then y'all yeah. text me about like problematic wrestler names, and I'm like, this Look, one probably deserved a second pass. Yeah, especially yeah. around his boss. Yeah, that's it's yeah. Um. It, anyway, <laughs> and also, uh, who's the the guy in, in black? Uh, is that what's that guy's name? There was yeah, there were some people here. I'm like, who are these? It's um, I don't know. <laughs> I didn't write down a name here, but sinister. Is talking to them, and Apocalypse shows up as well, and he's like, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of worried about this plan, and Apocalypse's plan is like, no, we're going to like just keep building up human-mutant relations, and when they drop their guard, we're going to kill all those flat scans, ah, ha, ha, and he's going to start a war. Abyss, and, um, it looks like, is his, his, his son, sort of? All right. Um, but yeah, also bad. I'm, I'm sure we'll see him again if he's important. Yeah, um, but yeah, Sin- Sinister's like, oh, I don't know if this is for the best, but we've also been working for Apocalypse for centuries. So, okay. <laughs> um, we, we which, need... I mean, that's all true. It all this is all Sinister. We didn't know that much about him in the 90s. This is all like uh, confirming his, his backstory. Mm-hmm, so, mm-hmm. so, so you're telling me that like we didn't know what this was, and the alternate universe is giving us the details? S- some of it yes like, i was thinking literally. about that like because like, they, they they told like nightcrawler go talk to your mom and i was like that would have been a cool way to like reveal like the true parentage of nightcrawler or something i think right. they'd already done it but i'm like right. I, I was thinking about that in the moment I'm like you could do an alternate universe to reveal facts right yeah. well yeah. we'd never conf- well i mean i guess uh X- x-men unlimited had more or less been like Hey, Mystique, uh, Nightcrawler and Rogue are both your children. So we kind of knew that. But yeah, like it, it is it is kind of, you know, a, a reveal that it's just like, hey, uh, Nightcrawler, go talk to Mystique. Yeah. <laughs> That's really cool, though. Um, and it makes it like have stakes and be meaningful and not just like this is all going to be undone in four months, which I don't know if you right, thought that was going right, to happen right. at, at this time or not. I, I don't know what I thought <laughs> in 1995. I was like, this is the coolest comic that's ever been made. Um, Who so, knows what's going to happen? So we finally meet the most important X-Men character in this universe. We get Wolverine. Uh, finally. And he's attacked by some humans. And him and Mora and, and Jean Grey and a bunch of other humans, they live in Big Ben in the tower. And oh, somehow yeah. they've agreed to work for Mr. Sinister, but they can't even trust him. And also Wolverine and Jean are a couple. Yeah, they give each other a little smooch, and Wolverine is missing one arm. Yep. Um, I'm back with Magneto. There's like a, a Bishop does like a psychic backlash thing onto Magneto and gives him full memory of the other timeline. And, and Rogue gets caught in it as well. And so they both now remember everything. Uh, Remy shows up. Gambit shows up to save Rogue from whatever is happening. I guess he was already planning on being here. Showed up just in time. Yeah, and he's like, "Hey, are you okay?" They've got some history. Um, he, Magneto... he wanted to know what Angel Spell Sideways was, so of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Magneto. That's when Magneto says, "Hey, Nightcrawler, we, we got to talk to your mom." And uh, let's see, Apocalypse is worried that Mister Sinister has disappeared. What happened there? Did uh, did Mister Sinister just like stop? Replying to his text or whatever. <laughs> yes, that's. Uh, we'll have to read Factor X. Well, yeah, we'll uh, see what happens there. Figure out why he's doing that. Uh, but yes, uh, Apocalypse, who's the villain of this story, is like, "Hey, Holocaust, uh, what's going?" <laughs> and uh, he's like, "Oh, uh, what's uh, what is going on? What is going on?" Indeed. Um, Rogue is telling Magneto, hey, don't go like looking for answers or whatever. Uh, but they're like hanging out. They're they're hugging. They're still in love. And there's something coming from outer space. Bum, bum, what is it? Dun, 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 dun. We don't know. Which they kind of know, right? I don't, I don't know. Maybe they don't know at this point. I don't know. Something with the Shi'ar probably? I don't know. It's always got to be Shi'ar. Yeah, it's close. It's close. Um, <laughs> You're close. right <laughs> <laughs> with no knowledge of what's going on. I really have I really have no idea. Uh but I like this. I mean, I I think in general I like the Legion Quest story more as a whole, but also that kind of makes sense. This is just kind of laying the groundwork for for everything else and setting the setting the stage, so it's hard to like it as much. But it does a good job of just kind of like jumping around to be like, "All right, here's the lay of the land before we before we see everybody in their own series." Yeah. Um I mean, like that X-Men Alpha is really, uh, you know, uh, we we've done other like event comics like it's so uh sort of um what's the word um it does everything so fast of like here's this character here's this character here's this mm-hmm. character where you're just like wow like you know so much about a world you've never read a book about yeah it does a good job where yeah. where yeah you're just like okay in this world Wolverine and Jean Grey are lovers. Cyclops works for Mr. Sinister. Um, Rogue and you know, Rogue and Magneto have a baby. Yeah, Rogue and Magneto are yep. not only a couple, but have a chi- a child named Charles. Uh, like it's it's totally bonkers. Uh, but you're just like, oh, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, go with it. Why not? Um, so yeah, I'm excited to eventually read all these other little mini series that are coming up here. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll let y'all know when we're doing them. We're not going to jump into them or do them all in a row because then we'd be doing this for... Yeah, we're not turning into an Age of Apocalypse A long podcast. time. Yeah. We're not going to be an Age of Apocalypse podcast. But we are going to do this quicker than we've, we've been... We've been doing a lot more of these sequels like Captain America, which we haven't done like in six months. Um, so this will be even a we'll quicker cadence this, than Captain America. Yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah, this will be yeah. our 2021 or 2022. We'll, yeah. we'll try to motor through it if it's only like 30 yeah. issues. We'll do we'll more. Try. No, no promises. Is that a resolution? It, no resolution. No, no resolution. I resolve it's good. nothing. I will say, uh, 10-year-old me, uh, perfect taste, uh, impeccable, 100% right. Uh, everything is great. I was explaining great. it to my, my 8-year-old son, like, and he's like, that sounds awesome. Like, all of it sounded really yep. cool. He's like, wait, so the X-Men? I was like, so, I was explaining, he's like, so this guy goes back in time and kills Professor X. He's like, before the X-Men are found. He's like, so there's no X-Men? He's like, no, Magneto founds the X-Men. So they're bad guys? No, they're still good guys what um but he was like that sounds really cool yeah. like but some good guys are bad guys now like cyclops he's like that sounds cool like eight-year-old yeah. mm-hmm. eight-year-old kid still idea like that sounds yeah. really neat yep. uh yeah 29 years later still a perfect concept the, like for alternate okay. universes alternate versions of people you know and just like it works for me every time man i don't even care I don't care what I like it is. I, just want, I want to see every like, alternate like, version. And I like that it's like giving us information. I didn't realize it was doing that, but I think that that's, yeah. it's still like that's giving us new facets and new things on the characters. I think I was watching that, like that, what if Marvel series? And it was just like, it, it, it weirdly like enriches you on characters. Like, Oh, so that's what Killmonger would do if he was Tony Stark's best friend. Okay. Right. So like, I still, <laughs> I see a character that I know in his character things, but I get to see him like play in more like arenas than just like the movie mm-hmm. he was in. And it's right, fun. Right. Yeah. As long as the right. characters are consistent. That's all. And they are, but you know, it's 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 how you push and pull them and throw them. Right. Yep. And, and Cyclops yeah. is still a loser. Right. Yeah, this is a world where Cyclops is uh I guess nurtured in being a loser. <laughs> um so uh so yeah, anything anything else to say about um, Legion Quest, Age of Apocalypse? I think it was any of it really weird that the Legion Quest had nothing to do with Apocalypse. <laughs> Like, well, like it's a cool, inciting incident. It has, and, and actually, I like that. Yeah. I just think it was really weird. Like, like it, it actually makes it even more of an interesting ripple 
that you're like, because this Legion thing happened where he killed Professor X, then Apocalypse was able to roll in a completely like wild card yeah, concept. Yeah, yeah, um, you're it's right. Not like, I, yeah, it's not like Apocalypse did this and then caused it mm-hmm. to happen. Right. It's and just like, like oh that. shit, I'm gonna capitalize. Yeah, right. Yeah, I yeah. I thought it was cool. Again, as a ten year old, and today it's just yeah. like literally uh, a character like, oh shit, that wasn't supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Where Legion is trying to kill Magneto, accidentally kills his own father. It's just like, uh oh. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, uh, so like we said, we'll come back to it eventually, but I think for right now, that's, uh, that's enough X-Men. Uh, we are going to jump over to the life and times of Scrooge McDuck part 10, getting real close to the end here. Um, yeah. the, this chapter is the invader of Fort Duckburg. We're starting Scrooge, to build the more, go ahead. Scrooge McDuck kills his own father and takes over. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> that's, uh, all right. Well, when did Scrooge kill his own father? What do you? No. Well, well, he's dead. He's dead. He did, he did die. Yeah. No, this is Fort Duckburg is the land that Scrooge has in Calisota Cal- is the state, I believe, uh, in Duckburg. And um, him and his two sisters are now in America. He's got his mil- his billions, millions, whatever. He's a billionaire, they keep saying. A billionaire um, in and- like 1890 something, which the inflation calculator, I don't even know. <laughs> It's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. a lot of money. At least um, a billion and a half. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a buttload Scrooge, of money. <laughs> Scrooge bought a really shitty car. It sucks. They're driving it along the rail. <laughs> well, he was going to get uh, conned Scrooge. by all those like extra amenities, like a break. Yeah. Well, first off, like Scrooge couldn't read the fine print. It was too small. He didn't know what kind of fuel it took. And also, he just, just declined the giant list of options without reading it. Yeah. it could, this, yeah. is, this is the weird, like... I hate this in books like they explain everything. But because this book's like not like purpose is to explain like everything. It goes like, I told you, you yeah, I can't read the fine print because of my, my Yukon eyes is like, I told you to wear your glasses. Scrooge is what his sisters tell you. Right. And so then he wears his glasses. That's why Scrooge has glasses. They That's explain right. yeah. every stupid thing. We know, we know why he wears his clothes the way yeah. he has, why he has glasses. This is yeah, needless, needless yeah, backstory. Yeah, I need but, the but next three issues. He has glasses. <laughs> Yep. Um, they get directions to Fort Duckburg, but it's like it's kind of broken down. They got to go up the steep hill. Uh, while they're going up the, the hill, Hortense is like reading the contract. And they're like, "Hey, you, you declined brakes <laughs> on the list." And, 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 so and, like, and the uh, the onomatopoeias of the car are like pip, 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 cr- cr- pip, 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 dead. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's good. It's good. <laughs> I also um, this is also a weird issue because Scrooge has a supporting cast. Like yeah. Hortense, and they're like and Hortense gives him out. shit yeah. the entire issue. Like it's nice like to Hortense. see his sisters. Like I really like it. Yeah, yeah, Hortense is also asking about if there's any handsome cowboys around. <laughs> they're boy crazy, super boy crazy. Um, but they go rolling down the hill into some cornfield, and uh, the cornfield is owned by Elvira, who <laughs> owns all the land around here. And Scrooge is like, family. well, not that hill. The duck. Yeah, they, their last name is Duck. Yeah, I never thought that Scro- I never I never thought that Donald Duck and Scrooge McDuck had different last names until <laughs> this moment. They do. Yeah. Oh my God. Um, <laughs> and but, so that yeah, means Ma he has to be he has to, we'll, Donald has to be related we'll, to him on his hold on. Okay. We'll get to, we'll get to the <laughs> Donald stuff in a bit. <laughs> That's like my favorite part of this, though. It really is. Um, so, yeah, Ma and Pa Duck are there. They own everything. And Scrooge is like, well, you don't own the hill. That's mine. And she's like, oh, then you must be Scrooge. My brother told me he sold it to you. Um, but, uh, you know, the local junior woodchucks have moved up there and they're using it as their clubhouse. And I like how excited Scrooge is by this. He's like, yeah, I love running off freeloaders. <laughs> my favorite, <laughs> favorite activity. Um, but then so they, they have two kids that we get introduced to and a third kid who when he comes out, his name is Quackmore. And he is all mad about this his cornfields that got messed up he looks exactly like donald duck he's <laughs> shouting up a damn storm and then hortense comes in and she's shouting up a down damn storm right at him and then they they've got like a uh, hard eyes at each other <laughs> and it's pretty sweet great ma panel is like i'm great panel yeah sequential ma ma is like hey maybe some someday i'll be grandma duck and pa duck is like oh I, sh- I shudder to think of the kid that would come from their holy union. It's, uh, it's like, yeah, that's definitely going to be Donald right there. Uh, yeah, Donald, Duck, 
it would it makes sense last name wise. Yeah. Yeah, it's like never, Donald never considered Scrooge it. has to come from Scrooge it has to be related by a, a Scrooge sister who changed her name, not yeah. from mm-hmm. not from a Scrooge brother. So, not, yep. he, yeah, he's not Donald McDuck. Get out of here. I never yep. ever thought about that until today. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> I'm um, glad that somebody so, did. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> So Scrooge is now going to go up to kick the woodchucks out. Uh, they've got the the cabin, the fort booby trapped with a bucket of water. Um, they've also got like this giant sized rule book that they have to take out for some reason. It's the Never really guide in. that the uh, the Huey Dewey or I think it's Huey is always referencing like according to number yeah. rule seventy five of the that's Junior right, Woodchuck yeah. Guide. It's uh-huh. giant. It's a literal giant book. That's well, and they're like, we need to make a pocket sized version of this. Which will show <laughs> yeah. up in mm-hmm. details. Uh-huh. Um. So the woodchucks, they're gonna they're gonna give up, but they're they're also like, wait a minute, what if Scrooge is lying and it's not his land? We gotta alert the That's authorities. legit. That's a legit so, question. So so they send a telegram to the president. Uh, and it's it's Theodore Roosevelt. And they <laughs> uh, who who we've met earlier in this comic, and they tell him that a billionaire from Scotland has seized a military installation, and he says he'll handle it personally, and that the Rough Riders <laughs> will ride again. What did he say were his uh, three favorite things that he campaigned on? It was like cap- unfettered set. capitalism, I think, is one of them or something. <laughs> <laughs> like um, Foreign military so- invasion because he's Scottish. Um, and something <laughs> else. Like, it, it hit all three of Teddy Roosevelt's campaign promises. <laughs> so dumb. So, so uh, Scrooge and his sisters are now transporting all the money that they brought with them from Scotland in barrels. And they're rowing it up the river because it's cheaper that way. And um, the Beagle Boys, as they're like rolling the money off the hill or whatever, there's like a little cabin somewhere else on the hill where the Beagle Boys live. And uh, they recognize Scrooge and they remember him and everything. And they come up to visit the, the fort. And Scrooge is literally bathing in a barrel of money. And uh, the Beagle Boys, the Beagle Boys say they're like the Lone Ranger, but there's four of them. And. Uh, Hortense and uh, what's the other sister's name? Uh, they're excited to have boys, two each. They're very excited for that. Um, doesn't happen the way they wanted because the Beagle Boys nail up Scrooge in his barrels and they like hang up the girls. And some artillery lands in the fort. Uh oh. It is uh, the Navy and the Marines and the Dwarf Voles and the Junior Woodchucks and the President. Amazing. Uh, it's an all out attack. Uh, when he speaks softly and carry a big stick of dynamite. Great. <laughs> I also like that he uh, says, like, watch out for that artillery coming at us. No, literally, like, because Scourge was just, like, throwing parts of the fort at people. Um, <laughs> yes. It's yes. a great gag. The whole thing, um, the speak softly and carry a big stick of dynamite really got me. That's great. Uh, Hortense with a broom is very scary to a lot of the soldiers, and she runs a bunch of them off. Uh, Roosevelt and Scrooge meet face to face. And they recognize each other, and they have a good time. They're hanging <laughs> out, and hooray. And the Beagle Boys are even excited to be arrested by the president. Wait till we tell Ma. Very exciting. <laughs> um, uh, Scrooge and uh, Roosevelt have a little dinner party with sausages. Uh, they never actually name him Roosevelt. It's important no. to say. They just call him the president, but yeah. Uh, he's like, bully, all this stuff. Uh, but they're having sausages over a campfire. They thank each other for teaching them some valuable life skills. And, and the sisters were like, I knew we were rich and we were going to have dinner with the president, <laughs> but not like this. Not like this. <laughs> and, and I think Teddy uh, Roosevelt says like, or I think Scrooge says to him like, oh, I, you're almost as successful as me. Um, I like that. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Uh, so six months later, we jump ahead in time. The fort is fully built. Uh, it is ready to start taking in money. Scrooge is ready to start building industries around the city. Um, Scrooge sees the woodchucks raising money for a new c- clubhouse, and he thanks them for calling the government because that's what saved him. And he donates a used doorknob. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Um, and yeah, we've got the beginning of his building part. We see a shot of like his gigantic safe sitting on top bin. of the hill, the money mm-hmm. bin. Um, it's a, it's a great shot of it. And we got people moving into town cause they hear there's going to be new industry, but they don't like the sight of that big thing. Okay. <laughs> uh, but that's it here. I think it, like, it, I, I like this issue a lot. I do think they're getting better and better cause they're also getting more and more familiar with what I know of DuckTales and everything. Right. Uh, so that's always fun to see. Uh, but yeah, it was a, a I good think issue. this was, this was my favorite issue of everything we've read. I think having the supporting cast of the sisters that like pushed mm-hmm. back against Scrooge, I think helped. 
and they're familiar characters. I love dumb things where like real characters like barrage and like, and then Teddy Roosevelt did this stuff like that <laughs> always gets me. Um, and then it was just a fun adventure. You got to see some of the things coming together, like Duckburg and the Beagle Boys coming back. It was a lot of fun. And the junior woodchucks, like it was like, oh, that's, oh, that's yeah, fun. we missed your we, we skipped over your line. But when Scrooge kicks them out and they're like notify all the junior woodchucks worldwide, what they say is like, oh, I think he's behind me. <laughs> it was just one <laughs> extra guy. So one more. Yep. Oh. I'm going to start calling everything worldwide. When, uh... <laughs> like, have we trolled yeah. the rest of our worldwide organization? You mean your dad? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Um, yeah, I really like that. Anything, anything else to say about this before we uh, finish off? Of course, you know, next time we'll do Scrooge number 11 here. But um, yeah, nothing else. Nothing else here. Uh, so what else are we doing next time? We are going to read... Uh, Oh, so we had some bad news from from George Perez out there in the industry. He's got uh, what was it? I didn't refresh my memory on this. He's got some type of terminal illness that he was given. I think six months to live. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> he's got cancer. It fucking sucks. Yeah. Um, he's a great artist, um, writer, artist. We've covered him a ton of times before. Like all of his, you know. Yeah, we do. We we've always read a lot of his uh, his his big sort of things, but we thought we'd, we'd revisit him Infinity, again. Here. Infinity Gauntlet. Um, Crisis on Infinite Earth. Crisis, yeah. Um, Wonder Titans. Woman. Yeah, Wonder Woman. He's, I mean, the thing, uh, Teen Titans, yeah. I mean, aside from that, like, he just seems like a swell guy. Like, a lot of my friends have been posting pictures of him at, like, cons, and he says, like, I'm going to come out to do one last con and meet the fans. I can still sign my name. And so yeah. he's, like, he's like really putting it out there, but he's like, but please, like, leave me alone. I want to be with my family for these last, this That's first fair. time. But also, I want to do something for the fans, like, because I know they love yeah. me and I love them. So it's and, like it's a really sweet guy. Yeah. Again, yeah. we'll we'll talk about it more whenever we're doing those. But I'm so happy that I I got a chance to meet him at a con. Um, it was very cool. I okay. I saw him like draw uh like freehand. I I just had him sign something. But like people in front of me uh, had him draw something, and I was just like, it's magic. Like he can in five minutes draw something, and you're like, how did you do this? Wow. Yeah. The thing. Um, so we were just looking for different things of his that were out there that we hadn't read, and we we decided we're going to read uh, Hulk: Future Imperfect. Uh, it's just two issues from ninety two, ninety three. Uh, the introduction of the Maestro, and uh, written by Peter David. So we thought it'd be a good one to check out. We haven't done too much Hulk here, and uh, Peter you know, David course, Hulk we'll, is supposed to be really good. Yeah, and uh, you know we're getting to the end of our long read with with Scrooge here uh, for our next long read. Not ready to announce it just yet, but it's probably going to be something uh, something George Perez related there as well. Um, but uh, yeah, so join us next time for Hulk Future Imperfect two issues as well as Scrooge number eleven. Uh, what else is going on? It's the Christmas time, uh, Vince. Well, what do you got going on for Christmas? Uh, you just have you had a that was a game that dropped today. As a yeah, film, right? the day of our recording. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, Mar- Mario Party Advance, which I talked about last time, but it's a open world board game where you and Mario Party go help a penguin uh, get out of his gambling debt so he can propose to his girlfriend. Um, it's a Mario <laughs> Party game. It's it's and uh and there's a depressed Loch Ness monster when we talk to other dinosaurs, so you have to go mm-hmm. log back in as as Yoshi. It's fucking weird, but I actually uh, really enjoyed it. Yeah, I watched this episode. You you started out being like, "This is the dumbest game ever," <laughs> and uh, um, you know what? I won't spoil the end. I won't spoil the end. Uh, Chris, how about you? What's going on with you? Uh, December, your stupid minds. Uh, we have our third, I believe, episode of our our ongoing Nutcracker series. Uh, we have Nutcracker: The Four Realms. Uh, what? what <laughs> What what realm is is going on? Uh, what is what is the uh, situation? Uh, okay. Well, are, we'll there are four the, realms in the Nutcracker. Yeah, well, well, that's we'll a new movie too, isn't it? Uh, it was twenty eighteen. Yes, like a Disney movie. Ah. Yes, D- Disney movie. Uh, the Nutcracker ongoing series we previously covered, Nutcracker three D. And um, I forget what the title was. I think it was a Nutcracker for Christmas or something like that. Uh, Most of Joan Hart Nutcracker movie. Uh, but we're back at it. How can uh, this movie be bad? It's from the director of Chocolat. Yeah. And uh, the director of The Rocketeer and Captain America 1 and Jurassic uh, Park 3. 
He only did the reshoots, Smith. Okay. So <laughs> he, he was not the director of the, the film itself. And just it watch the some, reshoots. They're like the director some... of A Dog's Purpose turned in this shit. We got to get the Jurassic uh, Park 3 director to fix this. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it. Is it is the director of some uh, uh, European films, uh, and then they got uh, what's his name Johnston to uh, reshoot it, uh, which is always a great sign. No problems there. No problem. uh, <laughs> but yes, we we will talk about it. Keira Knightley is in it. Uh, Helen Mirren is in it. Uh, it's a it's got a, Morgan Freeman with a pirate patch. This looks good. What? I don't see how this is a bad movie. Which, yeah, which he, realm is he from? <laughs> he he's the uh, the the magician. Uh, I mean, Kia, you know the story of Nutcracker. I don't like see a rat do. king on here anywhere on this poster. <laughs> uh, all right, well, no, uh, no rat king at all, Vince. What? Sorry, then rat fucking, king. that's the only good part of the Nutcracker. This bitch. Don't call it a Nutcracker, bro, bro. <laughs> don't tell me. <laughs> You don't All have right. to tell me that that's the best part of the night. <laughs> but I can't believe they cut it. I know. <laughs> what, what if they what if they shot it and cut it? That'd be even worse. Oh. Wild as it is, where it's a movie with Kira Knightley as the biggest name star uh, in the movie. Try to try to guess who the villain is. You'll you never will. Is it Kira Knightley? Like like <laughs> actor or character? Yeah, yeah, the actor. Again, I said Helen, Helen Mirren was in it, Kieran Atley's in it, and a bunch of no ones are in it. So it's <laughs> so one Helen of those Mirren? two. Helen Mirren's the villain? We'll, no, we'll Kieran Atley's the villain. We'll okay, see. we'll see. All we'll right, see. no spoilers, no spoilers. Uh, all right, I think that's it. I got I got nothing going on. It's Christmas time, and it's uh, everyone's got COVID. It's great. All right, uh, we've got, uh, yeah. See Stay you next safe time. in New York, Kia. Yeah. Stay safe. Yeah, we're fine. We're fine. Uh, Vince, uh, I love you. I love you too. Uh, Chris, I love you. I was transported to an alternate reality where I never met you. That's so sad. Uh, does that mean this podcast episode even exists? <laughs> and that's it. The end. All right. Love you. Love you as well, listeners. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye.